What's up? Welcome to the unofficial Tedeschi Trucks podcast. This is episode number 96. And I am Adam Choit. To follow the show, it's at Tedeschi Trucks Podcast on Instagram. And on YouTube, of course, uh, it's uh, Tedeschi Trucks Podcast. If you're watching, you are there already. Please be sure to subscribe, of course. Uh, give the video a like. I appreciate uh, that stuff. Uh, I'm at Adam Choit on Instagram and Twitter if you want to follow me. And of course, be sure to subscribe to uh, the show on whatever plot, uh, platform you listen to uh, podcasts on. I also have another podcast called People We Love. What I do with that one is interview uh, people from all walks of life, most often creative types about their lives and careers. The conversation is casual, but I also ask everyone to highlight the people they love, who've inspired them, who've influenced them, who've helped them in their creative uh, journeys and their paths, personal lives. It's been a it's been fun. It's been a been a journey in itself uh, doing doing that show. Please check that out. People we love podcast.com at people we love podcast on Instagram. I also have a short film out. Uh, it's now online that I wrote and directed. It's a psychological satire. I won't go into too much more uh, about uh, my other uh, projects and ventures right now, but uh, that is at the edited movie.com. It is a 10 minute short film. It is free. It's embedded there. It's on YouTube as well. Uh, the edited movie.com. But for this uh, podcast and for this uh, episode, uh, we have a guest. Uh, it's uh, South Carolina's own Larry Williams. Family man Larry is a longtime sports writer covering Clemson football. But beyond that, he is also a drummer in a couple of bands, Amongst the Trees and the Grateful Dead Almond Brothers tribute band, Grateful Brothers. As you might imagine, we talk Butch, JMO, JJ, Falcon, uh, and Isaac, uh, and lots of other drummers, and all things related to our love for Tedeschi Trucks Band and the music that has inspired uh, them over the years. Um, but let's just get started uh, because there's so much good stuff in this one. So uh, here's Larry Williams. So it's good to see you today, Larry Williams. Thank you uh, for joining me. I appreciate it. Adam, it's an honor. I, I uh... I'm flattered that you asked me to come on. I'm a, I'm a regular listener and uh, was was uh, uh, lucky enough to, I guess we just so happened to run into each other uh, in the lobby of the Beacon for one of those, I guess it was October That's 6th. Right. Uh, glad I introduced myself to you there. I'm glad I, glad you walked in when you did. We, we had had a good good conversation there and obviously a uh, great show. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. disappointed I was only able to get to one, so... So, yeah, those, those were awesome shows, and I I appreciate the 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 kind words um, for sure. How are you holding up during whatever year this is? Doing great, man. Um, I, I live in Clemson, South Carolina, which is about two hours northeast of Atlanta, uh, small college town. Um, my my day job is covering uh, Clemson football, which I've done since two thousand four. I spent five years doing it for a newspaper, uh, Charleston Post and Courier newspaper in South Carolina. And then since 2008, <clears throat> I've written for a website called tigerillustrated.com. And um, and so, yeah, football season is fun. It's busy but fun. Um, but I'm able to uh, find little pockets of time to, to do the music thing as well. So. That's cool. And I'm, a, I'm, I'm not the biggest of college football fans, but I do love NFL and I do love all sports. So I feel like I could do a, go into a long conversation just about, <laughs> about sports and about college football and about uh, that profession of yours. I know Clemson did beat Syracuse earlier this year. That is a thing. My, my, uh, my school where I graduated. Hey, from. Syracuse gave him hell, man. That was a, that was a close game. Syracuse yeah. was up in the first half up, uh, up 14 points at Clemson, which was, uh, that that was surprising to a lot of folks. Yeah, but uh, Syracuse football seems to be doing better uh, this year, I think, than in the more recent past. So that that's good for me. It's a, t- it's a tough <laughs> job, a uh, tough assignment for them to. I mean, they haven't been good in so long, so it's hard to it's hard to turn things around when 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 you just have year upon year upon year of being. I guess mediocre at best. So, but I, I like your your coach Dino Babers. I think he's a solid individual, and and uh, I think he knows what he's doing too. You're very you. So you're very. You sound like you're very knowledgeable about college football beyond just just Clemson. Well, that's my life. So right, exactly. Like if you like, I would be a ter- terrible terrible uh, 
like radio talk show host because I'm definitely not a generalist. I don't watch Major League Baseball. I don't watch much NFL because I'm so immersed in college football uh, during the season. So if, if I like had a radio show, like a three hour radio show, and somebody called me, called in and asked me what I thought of the Braves or something, I would, I would not know what to say. Yeah, but <laughs> I, that's... that would be a terrible. So I'm very specific with with what I uh, with my sort of passion, which also of course aligns with my professional part, and that is just college football. Eat, sleep, and breathe it pretty much for for the whole season, and then of course follow it in the off season uh, closely as well. I bet, I bet. Um... Well, why don't we get into your to your life and your background a little bit? I don't know if you're from from that area where you were born and raised, but tell me about where where that was and when it was, and and some of your you siblings and family stuff. And we, I, I want to know about like the music influences, especially like around the house when you were young and, and those sorts of things. So I'll kind of let you tell me your you know your musical journey from the beginning. Well, uh, first of all, it's kind of. Uh... It's, it's kind of bizarre to me that that, you, that you're interested in, in my life, but I'll, I'll uh, <laughs> I, I don't think I'm that interesting. But um, anyway, native South Carolinian, uh, um, born in Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, spent uh, some of my high school and college years down in Charleston, um, and then have, with, with the, the exception of living in Augusta, Georgia, for five years and North Carolina for one year have been uh, here in South Carolina my whole life. Um, grew up not really playing music, sort of picked up the drums in high school, I think like a lot of other, uh, or picked up music in high school like a lot of people do sort of gravitate to it, uh, you know, listening to Led Zeppelin and <laughs> um, a lot of classic rock and then play in a friend's uh, drum set over at his house. And that became, uh, I, I bought, my, I think my mother bought that drum set of his for me for Christmas one year. And then um, really kind of self-taught as a drummer. I actually kind of regret that now because um, I find myself thinking, man, it's, things would be so much easier. Some things would be so much easier if I, you know, if I had that foundation of being in the marching band or something, you know, with rudiments and things like that, um, played in a number of bands in, in uh, college, <clears throat> uh, blues, uh, jam based type stuff. And then from the time I graduated college until about 10 years ago, didn't do anything outside of the house basically because I didn't have time to um, you know, you're working for newspapers you're working a lot long hours you're usually working weekends and so there's really for a long time it felt like there wasn't time to um, to devote to actually you know playing out playing in a band things like that um, so it was basically just a drum set in my in a spare bedroom that I would try to practice uh, without annoying neighbors and uh, wife and things like that. Um, and so then uh, let's see, I guess about 2012, I think I was at, I think I was at a widespread panic concert. I, I used to love, I still love those guys, but I used to follow them around. And um, that was really uh, the, that was my jam for a long time. And during one of their shows, I'm like, you know what? I'm ready to, I'm ready to start playing out again. And so uh, I think I put an ad on Craigslist <laughs> basically saying, Hey, I'm, I'm a drummer here, are my influences and what I like to play. And I found, uh, found a guy, a guy responded who I'm still playing with to this day, uh, a decade, I guess, later in a band called amongst the trees, which is a, uh, a jam grassy type approach. Uh, featuring upright bass, keyboards, acoustic guitar, also slide guitar, and me. Uh, and I also play in another band called The Grateful Brothers, which is a tribute to both The Grateful Dead and The Almond Brothers, which is a total blast. And so my, I'm certainly not a professional. I do it part-time. I don't 
I'm not quitting the day job anytime soon, but it is an absolute joy uh, to be able to have a creative outlet that is separate from what you do uh, during your day job, even though the day job is a lot of fun too. I mean, I get to write about college football. Um, that, that's a lot of fun. Um, and so it's been really cool. And I think that, you know, the, the experience in the Grateful Brothers, when we have two drummers, that is what pulled me to the Tedeschi Trucks band and, and um, really made me start s studying what they do. And at that time it was, it was Falcon and JJ Johnson. And um, so this is only in the last several years that I've really just, my interest and love for them has just gone to a whole new, to the band as a whole, but also in particular, the drumming aspect of it has just um, gone to a whole new level. Just the appreciation of all the little nuances that go into that band. It's an, just an amazing, an ama really amazing thing um, that we have really a gift. I think uh, that band. Very cool. That Thank you for, sh for sharing all that. That's an interesting uh, journey for sure. You seem like you have a lot of, you have balance in your life or stuff just that being balanced, having balance in your life is something you have, you're conscious of, like you just kind of follow your instincts, but also have like co common sense and priorities and all these things and, and family and whatnot. So I, you know, I, I respect that where, where it seems like you're, you're coming from. Yeah, I think that's important. Um, it's very important uh you know i think i think it's important i mean i have two kids uh one in high school one in middle school and you know they're starting to ask like hey you know what they're starting to get curious about possible careers and my one piece of advice to them is you know do something that you're gonna love if you can you know um because if you choose a career based on oh, i'm gonna make this much money, you know, or I'm going to be really well off by a certain time. You know, I think that see, that sort of wears off. And then, uh, you know, there are lots of people out there who, you know, 10 years into their successful career, uh, they're miserable um, because they're not doing something that they love. And so I think, you know, professionally, it's important to, to, to find something that you really enjoy doing. And in just your daily life, I think it's important to just find fun things to do that are outside of outside of that. And I guess, you know, I'm a just like you, um, you know, we're creative people, you know, like you like my job is as a professional is every day I have to come up with something, <laughs> you know, a, a, an article and out of thin air basically so that's a creative process and then outside of that in the musical endeavors that's a creative process as well and so um you know that's just sort of my perspective just from a uh, being a person in that from that in that creative sort of realm uh, other people obviously are different but i think the general lesson is that yeah that balance is important I think it's also important for me, you know, my wife really understands the importance of having music because there are some sacrifices that are made on that end. Like, Oh, sorry, I can't go to this event because I'm going down to Charleston, you know, to play a gig, uh, with, with my band. And, um, she understands that, that that part is not just something fun to do. It's also a really important, um, uh, thing for your mental health, you know, and just for being that balanced, well-rounded person that I guess you, uh, you aspire to be. And you could, and because you're playing this music, or at least in part, because you're playing this music on some level, I'm sure it makes you a better person for her and for your family right. on top of it. And exactly. Yeah. Whatnot. Yeah. That was sort of the point I was trying to make, but probably, <laughs> probably didn't, didn't articulate it well enough. <laughs> no, you did. Um, no, you definitely did. I want to unwrap and unpack a lot of your journey or some of your journey, what you were kind of describing uh, before, like even before high school, when you so sort of said you were fond of Led Zeppelin and classic rock, 
were you was there other music around were you were you interested in music was it were you it, it just kind of slowly built towards like deciding to play and and why drums what was it about drums specifically that 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 made you gravitate towards drums oh man that's a great question um and it wasn't just classic rock i was all over the place Metallica was just, oh my God, they were gods. Uh, Pantera, <laughs> White Zombie. I don't know if, I know Metallica rings a bell, but Pantera, sure, yeah. White Zombie, not sure if those, uh, the, the metal, Danzig. I mean, it was like, you know, in high school, you're, you, a lot of people rebel, you know, and so our form of rebellion was listen to this dark, <laughs> uh, you know, badass music, you know. Um, that our parents didn't want us listening to. And so I guess the drums, John Bonham, Lars Ulrich, um, what was the guy's name from Pantera? Vinnie Paul, just a monster drummer. I mean, with the with with that music, like you, you can't help but be impacted by the drums, you know, because it was so powerful. Uh, is it in part because it's a physical, very physical, and it's very visual as well, in addition to the to the to the sound and yeah. the actual playing it, which is just fun. And it looks cool. <laughs> That's you what know? I was getting at. Yeah, like and as a kid, I always just looked at the drummer. You know? It's like, wow, man. It's just there's something, there's a mystique about it, particularly when you're when you're below, you know, you're looking up at the brilliance of the symbols and, um, and all that. And then I think too, even today, to this day, I mean, I think as a kid, I think it was probably just, I had a friend who had a drum set in his bedroom, you know, and it was like, whoa, you know, and that's probably what, what, why I latched onto it. I didn't know Music, any music theory. I didn't know notes, right? So I couldn't sit there to, with a guitar and piece together a song because I didn't. I didn't have any foundation. Whereas with drums, oh, I can pick up that beat, and if I sit here for an hour on a set of drums, I can learn to play that. Whereas if I have a guitar in my hand, I'm probably not gonna. <laughs> For you can give me an entire day and I won't know how to, you know, self teach myself, you know, how to how to play a song. I'm the complete uh, opposite, I was gonna say. I I feel like like I've never ever played drums in my whole life. And if you sit sit me down and, and I try to do it on my own, I won't won't be able to like I just won't be able to like yeah. not I won't be able to know how to do the hands and the feet and get everything all coordinated. Maybe if I want, like hardcore closely watch a YouTube lesson, maybe. But in person, I feel like I would need a lesson to do that. Whereas guitar, you're like, just give me a guitar and I'll just run scales or just practice something that I'll that at the end of the hour will be better at some aspect at least. I think part of it is just how each of us are wired. Because sure. even to this day, I'm a low end person. Like when I listen to a song. I'm listening to the structure. I'm listening to the bass line. I'm not listening to the lyrics. I've listened to songs a million times and I could not tell you what the most of the lyrics are about. I'm just naturally <laughs> listening to that to that low end um and and I I'm fascinated by the structure of songs. Um but I think if you if we're talking about going back to people taking up music in, in their early ages, I think it's also about, you know, a passion. Like I want to do that, you know, I'm going to learn how to do that. And so like, had I been really drawn to a guitar, maybe I would have, you know, been determined enough to learn how to play that song in the same way that I was determined to, I'm going to learn how to play these freaking drums. I'm going to learn how to separate my, you know, bass drum, you know, from my right hand and all the other stuff, you know, which is the natural introductory challenge for anybody who's, who's learning how to play drums. And so I don't know, man, I'm very thankful that I did. I mean, it's just, um, it, it's, it's the, 
best thing I think I well not the best thing one of the best things I ever took up you know it's on the list just, you, what's that I said it's on the list yeah like and I tell um you know I have various friends who I've given wh- whose children I've given lessons to and who are interested in taking up drums and I just tell them I'm like this will be with you for the rest of your life right like you can you can go away from it um while doing whatever but you could always come back to it you know i mean i'm 47 years old and i'm gonna be playing drums until my body doesn't physically (laughs) allow me to i just can't imagine not yeah and you could always at like at some point like just hitting a sim- like symbol or tam like you can down you can downsize yeah. playing drums into anything and just about anything could become a per- percussive percussion instrument and I could relate to so much of what you're talking about because I do feel like I listen to music in a similar way perhaps from more of a guitar player's point of view and listening to a lot of the guitar not that we're not listening to I'm not not that I'm not listening to the low end and sure. ignoring the lyrics but in terms of just how our brain is kind of wired and what we focus on at least initially uh i'm the same way and like lyrics can sometimes float over me i sort of feel i i would almost like subconsciously i feel like they they uh (laughs) they come into my into my into my brain but then when i'm actually learning a song it's like well that was that lyric that's what that is i didn't even realize that that's that's really smart like poetic and and whatnot beyond just sounding cool melodically speaking of that low end i don't want this thought to to escape me um the sound system at the Beacon Theater, oh my God! I, I they re they they, they re, totally redid the sound system there within the last year, I guess, with some state of the art. I don't know what it's called. I should, but we we were center. We were dead center in the lodge loge, um, and I was worried that there was going to be some bouncing around because we were under the overhang i i've never heard sound that good in a room i don't know if it was a a combination of uh, having that great sound system and exactly where we were sitting but holy smokes the low end when falcon (laughs) would hit his floor toms and his bass drum it was I mean, it was rattling your rib cage. It was just so. I mean, I, I, I was anyway. I was in ecstasy. <laughs> yeah, very cool. No, um, I mean, just hearing you talk about this stuff, like this is this is what I do this podcast for. I want to make yeah. it more and more. I, I of course, want. I'm to here for you, man. I, I'm, <laughs> I, I can. I'll geek out however you, however long you want me to. <laughs> like when you were even talking about it earlier, just like coming up to me in the lobby and and us or and us messaging a little bit. Like immediately when someone like talks passionately about Tedeschi trucks, either in conversation in person or like messaging, and I see how like passionate someone is and, and is saying paragraphs or, or whatever it's like I'm like oh this is a potential guest like that's, that's great, where my man. my brain is going and like more and more people i forget like that more and more people are discovering them it's not just like i do want to talk to every person who's been following derek since he's a, a, a kid basically because th- there's so many people out there who have like those roots that go that far back but like even in the last few years like people who've only been following the band may even yourself to some degree perhaps it sounds like are super duper passionate as some of the most passionate fans even if you've only been following Derek and Susan for a couple of years or, or or so it's like there's something about um as I'm trying to sort of figure out myself like why have I you know other than the, the drum part why have I gravitated to them so much and I think part of it is um it is a such a it's a refined form of jamming, I think. A mature jamming, like I, I mentioned earlier, like I spent a lot, lo, lo, many years listening to and following Widespread Panic around and other so-called jam bands. But maybe, maybe it's a product of getting older <laughs> that I like the more structured jamming, where they're not noodling around for. 15 minutes there's a purpose to everything they do and it's conducted by Derek um 
in a very intentional and precise way. And the more I see that and experience that, the more I'm like, this is where it's at. <laughs> you know, but maybe it's just I'm older now and I'm less uh, enamored of the, you know, the, and I'm not ragging on fish here because I, I really like fish, but the, the 45 minute tweezer, you know, like, I mean, I can listen to that. It's great, but uh, I guess at this point in life, um, I'm, I'm much more appreciative and uh, enamored of the Tedeschi truck style. And, and then all the the dynamics that, that they have are just un, unreal. Like, it is so hard to get, what is it, 13 people? 12. 12. 13 when they have the tuba. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> um, it's so hard to get that many people on the same dynamic wavelength and they can go just light as a feather. Um, and everything's really quiet and that's hard to do as a drummer too. And then it, you just build and build and build. And it's this just harnessed chaos, I guess it is maybe the best way I can put it, but the intensity to go to have that much intensity to be able to, to go to those two extremes with that big of a band is, is just remarkable. And I'm continually in all of it because I know how hard it is myself to be in a band and to be able to, you know, to wind your way around all those different dynamics. That is all so, so well said. I appreciate all that. I can't, I don't know if I could ex express the, the, the same sentiments as articulately as, as you just did, but I do echo the sentiments of you talking about, um, the jam aspect because this has come up in that in, in a lot of conversations and i and i hadn't used words like refine or mature i hadn't come to to mind specifically for when they go into instrumental things or or, or more jammy or even jam band stuff but i do think of it as uh their their storytelling their storytelling they're taking you on a journey they're doing that with the lyrics and the verses and the choruses too but when they go into in, in, you know instrumental type things and, and jams I think of it as a journey and storytelling in the same and a lot in the same way the Allman Brothers and and has a lot of that same intensity of the Allman Brothers yes. in there and their jams. It never felt like they were they were um uh what's the word? No, I'm no waste there's no wasted notes, there's no wasted space. They're not uh they're not me meandering. There's That's there right. is there is no meandering even when they're taking it down real quiet. There, there, there's no, there's no meandering, and and as you're saying, Derek is such a huge part of it, and and, and directing traffic and conducting and and leading on stage. But despite there being this narrative, I feel like to it, a lot of what we're seeing is certainly improvised as well, and that's just amazing to me that when they they can improvise but also have a narrative to what's going on on stage and an emotional journey, obviously. And they, you know they mix things up with their songs uh, quite a bit from what I've gathered, like, um, you know, like, um, they just get there. They, you know, like, so I, I would say like, you know, I don't know, let me get by or bound for glory, maybe different now than it was six or seven years ago. Uh, and in fact, I recall Isaac Eady, I forgot which interview this was. Maybe it was with Derek and Derek maybe recounted that Isaac was like, as he was learning, <laughs> trying to learn their catalog, he's like, all right, well, is this, do you mean the song from this song from 2017 or the one now? Because y'all play it like three different ways, you know, and Derek's like, oh yeah, we do. I gotta, we gotta settle on one, one approach moving forward. So there's creativity even in, in, even though they play a lot, you know, of the, you know, same catalog that they have over the years, there's still newness, I think, in how they approach each of those songs sort of as they go along. For sure. Um, I want to go back. We'll get back into TT, some TTB stuff, I'm sure, momentarily. But I want to hear, like, about, I guess, specifically your Grateful Dead influences and your Almond Brothers influences, at least broadly, like, because I'm sure that came before discovering 
Tedeschi trucks more recently. And did you know of Derek and Susan before, you know, recently discovering uh, TTB? Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely knew of them. Um, loved the Derek trucks band. Um, um, already free was in my rotation for years and years. What an album, just an amazing album. Um, in fact, I saw Derek play as a 14 year old with widespread panic in 1994. I want to say in Charleston at an outdoor concert. So I was very familiar with him. Oh yeah, so you've you've been you've been in oh, this yeah. world for a long time. Yeah, I, I got you. Okay, but, yeah, but you, but I just hadn't. I, I guess the the best way to put it is I hadn't been really bitten by a TTB, you know, to the full extent. I certainly appreciated them. I mean, the one of the first bands I was in ten years ago, we played Midnight in Harlem. Pretty ambitious to play that with the vocal vocally. <laughs> um, I've seen all the ambitious YouTube oh, videos man. and clips. Yeah, pr- pr- probably. In hindsight, probably wise just to leave that one alone as a <laughs> as a cover. Oh, no, enjoy, enjoy. Um, but uh, so no, we very, you know, very attuned to, to them and what they were doing, but just not just fully immersed in them the way I have uh, have been in recent years. Grateful Dead took me a long time to start appreciating them. Um, not sure what it was. I think I might have read one of the big biographies and just started listening more. Um, then became acquainted with Europe 72 and sort of the different eras. Um, and then really started getting into the 72 to 74 era, which also, uh, not coincidentally, uh, there's a drum, <laughs> uh, some drum related reasoning to that. That was the era that Mickey Hart was not in The Grateful Dead. Um, and I just liked the Bill Kreutzmann only approach. I thought it just sounded funkier, um, more, I guess, organic. I just didn't like, I didn't, I, I'm still am not a big fan of the Bill and Mickey uh, uh, two, drum, two drummer approach. Um, just my personal preference. Allman Brothers, on the other hand, uh, been listening to them forever, uh, and part of that is I think their their two drummer approach in the in the in their heyday in the early to mid seventies was as good as it gets um, because they just meshed so well. And by the way, I am in the middle of reading this book, which very cool was written by. Gentleman Bob Beatty, who you had uh, on your podcast recently, and that was a tremendous interview, by the way, with him and Alan Paul. Just um, really admire what both of those guys uh, have done and are doing. But um, there's just something so primal about the Allman Brothers drum sound that really grabbed me, and I think that I think the Tedeschi approach sounds really similar to that and it's amazing like sometimes if you close your eyes you're like this this is exactly the feel uh that 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 the that butch and jmo had and that is hard to pull off really hard to pull off and so um but i think as i mentioned earlier once i joined the grateful brothers band the allman and dead tribute band um I realized that, man, it's hard to 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 do um, to be, to. Um, so I guess I should go back up. So the main drummer, the other drummer in the Grateful Brothers, is basically Butch. He's the one who leads. Butch was the one who drove that band. Mm-hmm. I think Jamo only played. I could correct me if I'm wrong, but. I think he only played drums. I think it was only JMO playing drums, leading on drums in studio on one song, and that was Stand Back, I want to say. Um, he did a great job in Sea Level, of course, and a bunch of other bands. Um, but in the Allman Brothers, JMO was the secondary sort of complimentary guy who would apply flourishes and fill space that Butch left, while Butch was the one who was 
steering them through all the transitions and such. Well, when I joined the Grateful Brothers, um, I joined a drummer who was basically, and who still is basically Butch. And so as a drummer by nature, you, you just, you feel like you have to drive everything. <laughs> and so when you get in a, I hope I'm making sense here, but when no, you join this a, totally makes sense. When you join a band and there's another guy doing that, you don't want to step on his toes uh, musically and you, you want to do something cool, you know, and, but that, that involves doing less, which is just not in your nature because as a drummer, you're wanting to fill space and to be that rock, you know? And so that's when I started, it's like, okay, it's kind of hard to really study the Allman Brothers drummers because you there, there are not that many videos out there of them back in their heyday. Well, so that is really what turned me on to, to the Tedeschi Trucks drummers because there's tons of stuff you can, you can pull up and watch those guys. And so, um, you know, and back then it was, it was not Isaac, of course, it was, it was, uh, J it was Falcon and JJ and JJ was the one who was driving most of the songs and Falcon was the more complimentary guy. And now so I just, now, now, now it's the now opposite. Was, right. And, Falcon's and, driving now. and I swear, like, I don't know if people truly appreciate what Falcon has done. Um, because he's become a totally different drummer. Like in, like in this, in Tedeschi Trucks band, because before he's laying back a lot and just finding, you know, little spots, little percussive elements that, that he would bring. And then only in the, the chaotic and in, super intense moments was he really laying on it, you know, right? Like to where it's just this freight train. And now he's just, he's 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 the guy um and he's driving it i think more than jj was um and isaac is the jmo type so that's fascinating but i just have enormous respect for falcon i feel like i learn more from him each time i watch him um with how he is sort of putting his stamp on these songs and man to to go through that catalog of music and all the different changes and nuances and and then to say nothing of the jams where you're having to keep everything together and you're having to he's you having to lock in on Derek to see when he's ready to you know make a transition or in the song or whatever that is hard and Falcon is just flawless um, so. It's been so cool. Like I, when I heard JJ left the band, I was really bummed. And then when I saw they were touring, I guess the Fireside tour with just Falcon, I'm like, oh man, it's just not going to be the same. And I was like, I don't even know if I want to go watch him. But then I start watching, start watching them on various videos, and I'm like, holy smokes, this this <laughs> Falcon is is becoming a machine and he always has been a machine. I mean, he dating back to his days with Colonel Bruce. I mean, he was, he's always been amazing, but just in the context of this band, it just brought forth a whole new presence, uh, from behind the kit from him. And, um, I, I, it, 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 I really, you know, it, as you, as I'm studying them, it, it's really helpful and instructive, uh, for me and sort of, okay, how would I like to maybe borrow <laughs> some things in, 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 in my supplementing of the main drummer for the band that I'm in? Yeah. I appreciate he just hearing all that, for, especially from a drummer's perspective. Cause I, I can't say I often get, get that. And, and again, for me as like the guitar player, I just, I don't notice all of the nuances and maybe totally appreciate as much as I should the whole history of what's going on musically behind uh, the drummers. But of course I and all TTB fans appreciate and love uh, Falcon, uh, JJ and Isaac and what they, what they do. And so much of it is super memorable and, and Pasaquan has become just an epic beast that they've just put their, 
signature on Isaac and, and, and Falcon. It's just, I think they, I hope they, if they hear this, that they'll, they appreciate what you're, what you're saying. Again, this is like what I'm doing this for is just to get those like, you know, very specific reasons and, and why ever, why we love TTB and just give, you know, fans like yourself the opportunity to, to just express like how much they, they love the band and, and why. And I'm, I'm here to listen. Like, I don't even, I feel like I don't even have to have like questions for you. We're just going to talk <laughs> TTB and just, you know, just can continue on. And well, <laughs> I guess, you know, speaking of Pasaquan in your right, watching that song. And of course the drum solo segment, watching that grow has been so cool because it has changed, you know, um, it's different from what it was when they first dusted it off. Um, they actually played that during the uh, the swamp uh, the, the 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 sessions they did during COVID. They played the, that, yeah, the uh, fireside. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, the the uh, fireside yeah. series sessions. sessions, series yeah. series sessions. Yeah, they they played that. Hear my dear. Um, Maybe yeah. one or two other ones that, because I thought initially when this uh, these four albums came out, I thought, oh, they have never played these for the public, and I had those those fireside sessions that I had downloaded, but I had not listened to all of them. And then I'm just like several months ago, I discovered, oh my god, they they did play a few of these songs before, and I guess that's when they were recording um recording the albums but Pasaquan, another thing just from a drummer's perspective the energy and the stamina that it takes for falcon to i think you've talked about this on one of your podcasts right yeah to go through that every other night that is like the height of i mean the intensity that he has to have for i guess 20 minutes um wow i mean his he must be in great shape with his wrists and, and feet. I actually use that song to practice too. I practice to it when I'm trying to get ready for a gig because it helps get me in shape, you know? So um, really cool. And, and it's, I think we talked about this in the beacon at the beacon, but uh, when these new albums, before they came out, I'm like, huh, I don't know. The Fox shows were, were were coming out. I knew we. I, I knew I was going to see them at the Fox uh, this past summer. I guess July. We didn't meet there though, because I went to. We did not meet there. Shows. You were there. Yeah. yeah, we talked about that in New York. But I guess months Hollywood before Island. is when the the albums start rolling out, and I'm like, I was kind of bummed. And this is before I started listening to the albums. Before they actually came out, I was a little bummed because I'm like, oh gosh, they're just going to be playing all the new stuff at the Fox, and I really want to hear a lot of the, you know, a lot of the standards so to speak but something you and i both agreed on when we when we met at the beacon was these albums took zero time to grow on 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 you on us and essentially I think everybody yeah. else it was like they'd been with you normally with every other new album it's like okay i'm not sure what to think you know it's only months later do you have your fully formed opinion on that album right well, these were like instantly, just instant gold. Like you, like you felt like you needed it, <laughs> and you felt like it had been with you for a long time. I don't know; it's hard to describe. Um, I think I was gonna say I think part of that is due to the the genius way in which they were slow release, slow yeah. play, slow released them, like giving you just little snippets at a time to, that you can really d to dive into. But I think the quality is 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 even more than that. Is just why we love the music so so much. Like honestly, what well, I mean, if they put out twenty four songs all at once, I mean, yeah. I, I get we would we would more like no, oh, this song it it would be more maybe arbitrary what grows on who. But I but I think I think it's it's a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B, I guess. And I what I'm continually just amazed by is and i'm sure you've considered this too um i mean there was i think was an article in the new york times that quoted derek as saying <clears throat> that the albums might have saved the band um 
uh, which was like, whoa, like this, that, it's that important, you know, for them to have created something like this. But the fact that within the last, I don't know, three years, you've suffered significant loss, not just of life, of course, with, with, with Kofi's passing, which was just monstrous, but you lose Tim Lefebvre, who's just a, a, an animal bass player and a key part of, of your band. You lose JJ, who decides he wants to go do other things. You lose three really, really important pieces of, of the of the puzzle, and then you turn around and you produce something like that? I don't know. That's just incredible to me. Um, uh, that, that they were able to do that. And I think that is a function of of their incredible ability to pick out the right people to fill those spots. You know, like Gabe Dixon is just, he's just a superstar. Um, I've got to represent here. Very cool. One of the coolest shirts. Anyway, um, I forgot where I was going with that, but just the, 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 those, those the, the sounds coming out of those albums are just uh, they're so inspired, um, and I'm not sure what else to what other adjectives to use, but um, I can't get enough of them. Yeah, I'm sure you're a good writer. I can hear you digging into the to the the adjective bag and pulling out all the right <laughs> ones. I would say for sure. And what's amazing to me is that they they get they get better like not not that i i will love a bound for glory from 2011 from 2016 from 2022 and and they're different and but there are new new sounds and new things and new thing new musical ideas that the band continues to try and explore uh even on some of the older stuff and it's so much fun to see where these songs going live just talking about pasaquan before how it's it evolves within even a tour like that's that's fun to 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 uh like when we hear the new music the new albums the the studio versions like i'm sure a lot of us are thinking like wow where's this gonna go when they take it on yeah. on on the road like like that's that's super fun to 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 see and this lineup this lineup seems like obviously they they're they're not in flux and just the fact that they're not in flux and this kind of seems set and set in stone like that adds to the whole feeling of stability but this seems like it's the um, a, a golden age in a lot of ways, in, in some regard. And no disrespect to any past members, but in some way, I feel like with the "I'm the Moon" stuff and 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 just the, how on fire the live shows have been, and I've been lucky enough to catch a number of them in 2022. Like I feel like we're in some kind of like golden age for this for this band. Yeah, and I I forgot where I heard this interview, but it was a recent interview with Derek. And another really fascinating revelation that he um, provided was, he said, you know, maybe we won't tour as, as much as we we used to. Maybe we'll go back. And he said, we he said we came out of the out of those sessions, or maybe it was more recently during their more recent tours. But he said everybody's ready to go back in and do some more recording. And so it sparked something creatively in them. And maybe it was the, the whole assigning of, you know, giving everybody the poem and basically asking everybody to write stuff, you know, maybe that is what has produced this sort of new spark and this sort of um, maybe this revelation to them themselves that, Hey man, Maybe we need to be in the studio more often um, because we are creating some magic with this with this particular approach. Yeah, I I, I believe it. And besides shared responsibility of, of writing songs and shared duty of writing songs, I think they probably just share a lot of inspiration from each other. Just Gabe, Mike. Susan, Derek, just those four, you know, in terms of the, the songwriting, I'm sure there's so much to just inspiration. If one person comes up with, you know, an idea or, or shares an idea, I'm sure, you know, that inspires them to go, another member to go work on their thing or what they heard is going to inspire them to go, oh, I can try that, this thing in my, you know, I don't know. I just think that a lot of that, you know, creative energy is, 
it helps and and it's like an almost like an organic professional way of like holding each other accountable not that they need to hold each other accountable but but to keep things moving forward it just seems to happen with such joy and passion and and inspiration from each other or at least that's what i imagine yeah. how it plays out not that creating such brilliant music is without challenges and and along the way yeah for sure oh man um how many times have you seen uh the band live tedeschi trucks band i think i can count on one hand um the first time i saw them was the fox on one of the wheels of soul tours in maybe 17 when the drive-by truckers and marcus king band uh were opening for them um and then the only other times were twice at the fox last summer oh i'm sorry i saw them at the beacon a year ago in october uh so 2021 one show and then this past summer two the two fox shows and then the one show at the beacon um this past october my wife's birthday is is in early october and so i i said hey you wanna she's not as hardcore into ttb as i am but she did come to the fox show one of the fox shows and so after one of those after those fox shows i was so geeked about the band that i'm looking at oh where are they playing later on and i see the beacon coincides with her birthday and so i say hey you want to go to New York City for your birthday? <laughs> oh, I so see how we phrased. Too. I see how we phrased it. <laughs> no, she had a blast though. Um, that again, that sound system. It it was so crystal clear that you know a, a generalist like like she is was able to really enjoy it because she can you could truly hear the lyrics and everything was just so sharp. So. Um, so no, I haven't seen them them much. Um, but gosh, it seems like every day I'll go to YouTube and do a search for the last week of, of videos. I'm conflicted about that because at the second Fox show last summer, I was on the floor. And the floor, there's not really enough slope at the Fox. So you're like, look, if there are tall people in front of you. Yeah, I got that problem kinda, a little bit. You're kind of... <laughs> It's just not really sloped as much as you'd want it to be. But in addition to that, two rows in front of me, directly in front of me, there was a guy who insisted on holding his phone above his head the entire show. And so I was basically watching his phone, watching the show from his phone. And so I was, I'm conflicted about like some, And in the moment, I'm like, good gosh, why would somebody do that? Like, what are you going to do? Go home and watch it. Like, the experience can't be the same as when you're at the show. But then I'm thinking, oh, maybe he's putting it on YouTube so people like me (laughs) can watch it, you know. So I'm conflicted about the YouTube thing. um, But I'm just fast. Go ahead. I was going to say ask him. Next, that that's what that, I might I might I'll try to do that next time if someone's phone is actually like super close to me and it, I'm like are you gonna post you're gonna at least post this if I'm gonna be like dis- distracted by this <laughs> well, and it better be high quality too and the whole song's with cu- good cuts I did and tell ask, everyone around us not to talk what were you gonna say what were you saying I did ask him I, I I tapped the guy so he was two rows in front of me so I asked the guy in front of me to get the guy's attention because I wanted to politely ask him to to stop and the guy refused to turn around he was shaking his head no no and then i said well can you ask him to at least you know pull it down some and so he did that but he was not happy but he had to i mean i was infringing on his enjoyment of the show by just asking him to put his phone down a little anyway that's i'm sorry i would never ever ever do that at a show. Uh, but again, we're back to what we where this started, and it is a lot of us like to watch those videos on YouTube. I've been watching a lot of the Europe stuff, I'll tell you that. You know, it's funny. I'm a bad fan, I guess, because I haven't 
done uh it's I've saved my bookmarks Tesky truck search most recent videos because there hasn't been too many on archive.org or right. whatever full shows that have come out but there maybe are songs of uh, or uh you know videos of, of of individual songs there is some pretty good stuff over the last 10 12 shows that's come out on YouTube I've seen some of it but yeah it's, it's just good. purely random people who are doing a song or something uh for the most part but it's still cool to get the Sure. To, to, to look at the different venues and how it's so much more, you know, they're smaller venues. So it's really intimate. And I was, I was watching one of the, um, one of them, one of them recorded, uh, one of the drum solos <laughs> and you heard this Brit going, dear God, these guys are amazing. <laughs> Maybe that's more Australian, but anyway, uh, but it was really cool to hear the, these Brits just like with their jaws on the floor, uh, watching those guys. Yeah, very, very cool, cool stuff. Do you remember seeing Kid Derek live? Do you remember that show or anything about that, that yeah. show? Yeah. What do you remember yeah. about that? Again, it was 94, I want to say. It was an outdoor show in Charleston. It was it was called the 96 Wave Fest. That was one of their radio stations down there. And I want to say they were playing, I don't know if you know any widespread stuff. I want to say it was Chili Water. Uh that he came on and played with them. And it was just that, you know, we knew who he was. Oh, this is the Almond Brothers type nephew, something or other. That's what we knew. Um, we knew his name. Um, but yeah, he was just shredding away even back then, of course. But that was really cool. It was cool to be able to look back all these years later and, and say, yeah, I saw that guy when he was 14. Yeah, not all that much has changed. It still kind of has the same that general demeanor and expression and focus and zen zenness too. So I had a good. I forget who I spoke to talk to about this, but like, good conversation about how zen that dude is and where does that like come from? Like, yeah, it's 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 cool to um, watch people discover what's going on with them on stage, like at the Beacon show that I went to in October of 21, I took a friend of mine and I don't think he had ever seen them live. He really likes them, but he'd never seen them. And, uh, like halfway, I think it might've been set break. He goes, he goes, man, he says, so Derek, he's like staring at his, it looks like he's just staring at his boots the whole time and not really doing anything. He never sings. He never interacts with the audience. He said, but he's running the show. He noticed the little, the little the nod. nod. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought that was so cool. I'm like, man, that, you know, my friend was paying attention, you know, uh, and he learned, he learned that pretty quickly just by observing. And it's something that, I think most casual observers the first time are probably not going to notice, you know, yeah. they probably walk away going, God, why didn't that guy say anything? He's not doing anything. He looks bored, you know, but he's just, that's, that's his thing. You know, um, I mean, he, he's conducting it. So that's a lot on your plate, <laughs> you know? requires a high degree of concentration i guess you know he has to stitch it all together yeah for sure he's running the the and conducting the the the, the you know the musical direction and, and the band on stage and she susan is really controlling the crowd and the yep. energy and the the atmosphere and and the uh the, the program <laughs> like making sure to, to introduce everyone and, and say whatever she needs to say and, and or whatever she wants to say to, to keep the energy going and express herself and all that. So they're, um, they are a great team. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. It, 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 it's a, it's just a treasure, uh, to have them doing what they're doing and also the reasons behind it, you know? Um, I think it's pretty, probably pretty well known that Derek, you know, he observed and paid close attention to, um, you know, what happened to 
Dwayne Allman and what happened to Greg Allman and countless others. And, you know, he made a decision, you know, he, he sort of rationalized or, or concluded, Hey, you can do both. You can, you can be a rock star and do what you love on a stage while also being a family man, you know, and being a respectable, um, dependable person. Um, so I just think that's really cool as we're talking about, I guess we're coming full circle here as we started the conversation talking about balance and, you know, being happy professionally and also doing things outside of your profession to stimulate you and, um, you know, satisfy whatever creative urges you have. Um, I think that's probably a big part of what, what they're about, you know? Um, I mean, it can't be easy all the time to have, <laughs> to be, you know, working with your spouse, um, but they're doing it and they're doing such a beautiful job of it, um, at least from, from the outside looking in. Yeah, I mean, what you're describing makes them like seem even that much more down to earth and relatable and and in a position where we, you know, from at least from afar as fans, someone from afar, like admire them and 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 have such a deep appreciation for all the sacrifices and and that 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 you know that they found a way to 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 make it work. H- have you had any personal interactions uh, with with Derek or Susan or any of the the band over the years? No, I I did meet uh, Falcon um, after one of those Fox shows. Uh, last summer, I hung out outside of um, outside of their uh, dressing room, you know, outside of Fox for a while, and got to meet Isaac. Um, got to got to chat with Falcon for a few minutes. He was actually his Uber had just arrived, and so <laughs> he was in a bit of a hurry. But he was so gracious. I think once I told him, "Hey, man, I'm in a double drummer band too." He's like, "Oh, wait, oh yeah." So that got his attention, and so actually he had invited me to the um, to the next night's show to hang out backstage. But I think somebody in um, Los Lobos, I think, got COVID, and so they sort of shut it all de- shut the backstage access all down. But um, you know, he, Falcon and I have communicated since, and just he's a very approachable, gracious, down to earth guy from what I've experienced. Um, have not met Derek or Susan, but I have my icebreaker. If I do meet one of them, they are of course huge Jacksonville Jaguars fans, and Derek has been known to to rock the Trevor Lawrence jersey. And so I covered Trevor when he was here, and so that'll be the that'll be the icebreaker. Hey man, I I, I covered Trevor. I don't know if he'll be impressed. But he probably won't, but anyway, it'll be a good conversation starter. That's actually I had the same thoughts like because I've I've talked to Susan a little bit and 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 a couple of conversations with with Derek over over the years, but like, I'm like um, I should talk to them about not music because they probably get that <laughs> most of the time. So and then I was like, oh, I could talk baseball with Derek and and you know talk Mets Braves and at least and at least banter. I'm just so um, paranoid or or. Uh... I don't want to come off as that fanboy guy, you know, and I mean, they, you know, they, these people, you know, they get approached all the time, you know, and so it's like when I was, you know, when I was right. hanging out waiting for, waiting to try to meet Falcon, I'm like, God, I feel so, it's just, I just don't want to come off as, you know, like in my, in my job, like, I'm around a lot of fans who are like, Oh my God, you get to be around, you know, Debo Sweeney, who's their head coach or, or, or Trevor Lawrence or whoever. And I'm like, yeah, it's just my, it's just my job. You know, I don't, I'm not starstruck by it. It's, just, it's because I do it every day. And so it's, it was hilarious almost to, as I'm sitting outside of the Fox with my wife and I'm like, I kind of get it now what 
Clemson fans are like when they <laughs> when they're you know thinking about rubbing elbows with one of their heroes, you know, like that's what I'm doing right now. But I just don't, you know, I try to be cognizant of, Hey man, this is their lives. Like they do this every day. And so, you know, they're just trying to get back to the hotel and chill or whatever. Anyway. So, yeah, no, I, I get that. I certainly get that for sure. And I guess just like as long as one is nice, not obnoxious, yeah. polite, and doesn't take too much of the band's time, as long as you're kind. And if you're saying kind, appreciative, yeah. complimentary things to the band that are not like over the top or like, uh, you know, phony in some way, I think yeah. they'll they'll appreciate it. And, and I don't know, they're probably pretty good judges of character and they could tell if someone's like bullshitting them on some level and and just taking up their time and wasting it on on some level um that is cool stuff i appreciate your time i don't want to take up too much more of it i think you're in a different time zone a much different time zone than me (laughs) it's okay man it's definitely later where where you are um i don't know if you have any other stories or anecdotes you want to share otherwise i'll I'll let you uh plug and promote your band you how people can find and follow you and and give you the floor to do do those things yeah um I guess uh, the for the oh I, I know um, the other band that I mentioned that I'm in amongst the trees. Uh, we just released an album uh, earlier this week, and it's on all the streaming platforms. Um, and so yeah, if you want to go check it out, uh, feel free. We're really really excited about it and, and proud of it. It's amongst the trees. Um, and the Grateful Brothers, I think you could find on YouTube. Um, there's also a website, gratefulbrothersband.com. We also have a Facebook page and all that. So, um, yeah, those are the musical endeavors. And then for the sports-related stuff, um, I mix it up a little bit on Twitter every now and then. My handle is Larry Williams Ti, and the Ti is for the website that I work for. That is TigerIllustrated.com. So. I think that's about it. That's all, that's all the promotion. I think um, I think that's all the promotion that I deserve. I guess <laughs> <laughs> whatever I'll, you know, whatever you want, I'll give you give you give you the floor. Like I said, I appreciate the time again. Great stuff. Great stories all around. Like I just feel like I'm doing the right thing and I'm in the right place and talking to all the right people and just just because I just enjoy listening to all these stories and connecting with people connected to the Allman brothers who play this music and live this music and love this music and listen to this, this, this music and, and TTB, of course, like it's just been a joy for me. I feel like I'm just getting started in a lot of, I don't know. I keep saying that, but I, I'm going to keep <laughs> saying that for like 10 years. Like I'm just getting started. I feel like there's so much more I can, there's new stuff coming from them and old stuff. I haven't dove into and fans who have been following Derek and Susan and, and almonds for way longer than than i have so it's 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 a journey i'm looking forward to, to well, keep going with things on my end well i just i joined the uh a couple of months ago i joined the uh swamp family fan club or whatever uh on their yeah. website i mm-hmm. guess you're are you on there i am i'm not i need to be more active on there but i am on there yeah i, I do too i need to be more active as well but anyway uh a few weeks ago somebody came on the I guess somebody's affiliated with the band uh, popped onto the, onto the uh, message board and said, Hey, would you guys, which would be y'all's preference uh, from the beacon? Would it be uh, albums, live albums uh, featuring the new songs that they played through the whole, you know, so different variations of of the the, the different iterations Mm -hmm during that run of of each new song or would you rather have just the entire run from beginning to end as something on video they, or audio audio or both? I, i'm okay. pretty sure it was audio i'm like wow this is cool they're actually we actually get a say in this but um that that would that's something i'm really looking forward to um they can do whatever they want and i'll lap it up but my preference is for the from beginning to end Thumbs up for audio listeners. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was doing for to, in agreement with, with, uh, with, with Larry there. But again, thank you for the time. And I'm looking forward to apparently new, new live stuff, new pro pro audio yeah, stuff coming, coming from maybe, maybe, uh, 
was it the beacon shows you said yeah the beacon run yep good, good stuff all yep, around that's what they said Sounds good. We will talk more soon and I'll let you enjoy the rest of your evening. Take it easy, Larry. Thank you for thank you for all you do, man. Really, really appreciate it. Uh it's given uh, uh it's given me and a lot of others a lot of enjoyment as well. Thank you. Oh, that means everything to me. Yeah. Take it easy, man. Yep, you too. So there you go. Episode 96 with Larry Williams. That was a lot of fun. I really appreciate uh, his time and for getting the drummer perspective on TTB and beyond. Anyway, hope everyone is doing okay out there. Please check out at Tedeschi Trucks Podcast on Instagram. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on whatever platform you listen to podcasts on. Positive reviews on Apple Podcasts are appreciated. Tedeschi Trucks Podcast is the YouTube channel. Please subscribe. I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Adam Choi. The band, Tedeschi Trucks Band, is at TedeschiTrucksBand.com. That's their official website. Buy the merch, buy the tickets, join the Swamp Family Club, do all the things uh that are available to the fans on on that site uh at people we love podcast is my other podcast on instagram people we love podcast.com for all things related to that show the edited movie.com is my short film i think that's about all i got for today thank you again for all the support um and for listening and let's uh talk soon later